What's going on, guys? It's me, Shane, aka Turtles and Tentacles, and also Turtle and Tentacles, or Turtle and Tentacle, here to bring you another video. This one is kind of late. I meant to do this when 2020 hit, but oops. Uh, I'm going to give you my top 10 games from the last decade. That is from 2010 to 2019. And uh, I am basing this on how much I played and if I beat them or how much of the game did I beat. Things of that nature. And number 10, which shouldn't be much surprise, is Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. In 2011, for the PlayStation 3, I played the hell out of this game. I actually played uh, Vanilla NBC a lot. I love the crossover series. If you watch my earlier video, which you should watch my earlier video, about my top 10 favorite fighting games, NBC is... The whole series, I love it dearly, and I remember playing this game for hours upon hours into the wee hours of the morning. Set after set, I I think this is, I don't want to say this wasn't my introduction into the FGC, this was more of me slowly kind of getting more competitive, like back in the day. I remember uh, looking up videos on how to play individual characters a little bit better. Pretty, pretty good game in my opinion. I even bought the game for... Xbox I rebought the game on PlayStation 4, so you can say that I love the game dearly. Number nine is Super Street Fighter 4 Arcade Edition. Yes, another fighting game. Super Street Fighter 4, though, Arcade Edition is the last edition. And if you want to count uh, the last one that came out with Omega Mode, I didn't really play much of that because that was on PlayStation 4. But I played a ton of this on my PS3. Actually, I started playing Super Street Fighter 4 on my Xbox 360. Played the game so much that the disc got scratched. And ended up going to PlayStation 3 with the series from then on in. Uh, another game I had tons of online matches. I had tons of uh, achievements, tons of trophies in this game. I ended up learning how to play with most of the roster. This is probably the game that helped me learn charge controls since I was a little bit older, a little bit more able to understand how charge motions work and how uh, charge partitioning works. Um, I have to say I like this game a lot more than Street Fighter V. Not just from a visual standpoint, but from a gameplay mechanics because you had your ultra uh, ultra finishers, you had your super finishers, you had your focus attacks, you had your GAC, DHCs, you had all of that wonderful stuff. So, uh, number eight is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare for the Xbox 360. Played this game all the time. Uh, the particular people I play with is just I would I would usually just pick the giant chomp plant or I'll sometimes pick the pea fighter. I think I picked probably every single class in there except for healer. Other people like to play healer, which whatever I don't care, but tons of fun. Uh, this was a game where you would get into matches and you would just be on there for hours and hours and hours. A really good game if you just want to unwind and play a quick match and take a break, get your water, break in, get a hydrate, get some food. If you just want to watch somebody play, it's another good game too. Um, I can't, I can't think of how many trophies I got out of it. I got a lot of it for the Chomp Plant. But when Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2 came out, a lot of people weren't happy with how the system, how the systems in there changed. They promised that things would carry over. <sighs> they did not. And a lot of people's progresses with some of the older plants that were on the original PBZ got lost along the way. Mine did too. <clears throat> you, it was one of those games where you would pay for cosmetics, which was... Fine, you never had to pay for characters or pay to win, which was amazing, which is how DLC should be done. My number seven game is Phantom Breaker Battlegrounds for the, well, for Xbox systems as well as on the PlayStation 4. It's a beat em up, and if you've never heard of it before, I wouldn't be surprised. The Phantom Breaker series is more well known over in Japan, and it was an Xbox 360 exclusive game over in Japan, anime fighter game. Um, which turns out that those characters in that setting 
translates very well to a nice little chibi uh, beat em up kind of style game. I know, what was that game called? The Scott Pilgrim game tried to come out around that time. Could not connect with people, uh, you know, across the world, which was just a for me. But with this game, you could easily do that. Uh, the community around there was very, very helpful too. I remember running into just total strangers who had completely leveled up their characters and they would help me go through a super extreme hard run just to get my characters leveled up. Very fun game. Um, if you if you happen to have a PlayStation 4 or if you have, I don't know if it's on Xbox One. I know if you had it before, you can get it again. So I'm going to assume that it is. Pick this game up. This game is amazing. This game is fun. Uh, they do have DLC characters. They have uh, Carisu from Steins Gate. She's in there. And they have another character from the, uh, I believe the company that made this is Nine Mages. So those kind of anime people, if you know those games, I don't really know them myself. But there's a character in there. Pretty, 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 pretty fun. My number six is Smash Bros. I put Ultimate. But I'm just going to put, I'm just going to say Smash Bros. Period. Again, if you go to my other video about my top 10 fighting games, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, you will see that I endure the Smash series, obviously. Uh, I remember the very first Smash game when you're trying to, when I was working hard to unlock Luigi and Jigglypuff and Ness and then Melee, working hard to unlock Mewtwo and Marth and Roy. I think, yeah, Marth and Roy was in there. Ike was in. Ike was in Brawl. Again, I probably already talked your ear off in the other video about how much I like Smash Bros. But if you have a Switch, I don't know why you don't have this game. It is tons of fun. You're going to find at least five characters that you like. If you're one of those people that only masters one character, this is a fun game. Pick another character, please. But yes, Smash Bros. My number six. My number five Ha ha ha, it's Persona 5, the original. I've been watching people stream Persona 5 Royale for the PS4, and apparently it's... I don't know how you can improve upon an already great game, aside from Morgana telling you to go to sleep, even though you don't want to go to sleep. Great game. Uh, I think I'm only two bosses away from actually finishing it, but since Royale is out, I might just not finish that and just wait to pick up Royale around the holiday season. Um... Great characters, as always with Atlas Games. Terrific soundtrack. If you have not heard the soundtrack for the original P5, or for P5 Royale, or for the anime, the anime theme is pretty damn good. And that is saying a lot, because the Persona 4 uh, animation, the Persona 4 animation theme was kind of meh, but I highly recommend you look up this music, please. The uh, it comes in English and in Japanese because the singer there she is amazing. My number four is Devil May Cry 5. The Devil May Cry series is back, baby. This game, oh, this game, I haven't finished it yet. I played a ton of it, then life happened. I'm probably gonna try to stream it probably in the next couple of weeks so I can try to get through it. I don't know what to say about this battle system. First of all, the game looks amazing. It's using, I, I can tell it's using the RE engine that Capcom started using back with Resident Evil 7. Game looks amazing. The characters that you're going to play as each feel unique. It's not only a love letter to the fans of Devil May Cry, it's a, you can even just jump in right now. It's going to tell you everything that has happened, everything that has gone on with the series. Just mm. and it connects everything. It connects the anime. It connects the earlier games. It kind of connects some of the mo uh, the novels, the novels here and there, and a little bit of the uh, graphic novels. But amazing game, amazing series. I think probably the character I like playing with the most is between Nero and V. V because V is different, but Nero for sure amazing. I can't wait to get to the end of the game. I watched some. I watched someone play to the end of that game. Mwah, it was Chef's kiss. Number three game is Mario Kart Eight for the Wii U. Yeah, the Wii U, the series that nobody played. 
I played a ton of this game. Like, too much of this game. To the point where I actively got the DLC for this game. Which was Link. You know, I think there's an Octoling in there. And Link had a motorcycle for whatever reason. Because I think this was Link based on Breath of the Wild. So, I don't know where Hyrule have motorcycles. But I digress. Um, great game. Wonderful game to break up friendships. And a wonderful game to meet new enemies. Yes, blue shells still indeed suck. My number two game, Bayonetta. And just the first one. I haven't played the second one. Bayonetta is what you get when the when the guy who wants to make Devil May Cry can't make Devil May Cry. So instead, he gets a very talented uh, character designer, Ikumi-san. And she designs one of the best female role models in video games, period. And yeah, she uses her sex appeal to baffle her enemies. It's empowering for her. She is an amazing character. <clears throat> She's also in Smash Ultimate. Uh, I have to say, I can't remember the last time I played a character action game outside of Devil May Cry 3 that really made me want to keep going back and keep playing the game. It is a non-stop action, action-packed thrill ride. Um, I do recommend if you have the Switch, you get the two-pack that has Bayonetta 1 and Bayonetta 2. I do also recommend that you just play this game, period. I cannot wait for Bayonetta 3 to come out because I'm telling you, I played Bayonetta 1 for like, I want to say two or three months straight. And that was after I had finished playing D, little MC, and I played through all that game. You know, once you get in the character action game mood, you're kind of stuck in it. And I'm pretty sure I got almost all the trophies for this game. It gets hard if you don't know what you're doing or if you're rusty, but you will not regret playing this game. I know I didn't. And my number one game of the decade of 2010 to 2019 is Pokemon Y. Yeah, a Pokemon game is my number one on the list. Why Pokemon Y? Because feeling the feeling of going from A to B, going through the town to town, it didn't feel quick. It felt like there was a little bit of time, but it didn't feel too long. There was so many Pokemon at that point, because this was Gen 6 at that point. With so many different Pokemon, there was no way you couldn't find a team to play with. And the game was just amazing. And yeah, if you're a Gen 1 person, you can get your Gen 1 starter. Which, you know, I'm a Charizard guy. I got my Charizard back, but... It was difficult not playing with all these other Pokemon. And I personally, personally make it a point of picking new Pokemon. But when I saw Charizard, that was the only one I picked that I played with in prior games. Uh, this was the jump into 3D, full 3D. This was the, this was the, this is the starting point of them making breeding and EV training a whole lot easier. I did not do all that stuff in Gens 1 through 4. Sorry, 1 through 5. I didn't have the patience for it. One of my good friends, he has the patience for it. I do not. But in Pokemon Y, I had time to go ahead and just run around in a circle and to match up uh, the natures I wanted to get the egg moves I wanted. It introduced the Wonder Trading System, which took a lot of weight off of your shoulders if you want to be kind on christmas send a deli bird you want to be spooky on halloween send a pumpkaboo this game kind of introduced us into being more uh involved with each other without actually seeing each other thanks to the nintendo network this is one of the few times that nintendo network actually came through and actually worked very 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 well so there you have it those are my top 10 games of the last decade, I'm really hoping that, you know, 2020 up to, uh, 2029, whew, God, this year, sure hope the gaming for that is great, I mean, look at all the stuff we already got now in 2020, we got Final Fantasy 7 Remake, we got Last of Us 2, 
<clears throat> you have RE3 Remake. Heck, RE... Well, RE2 Remake was last decade, but you got RE3 Remake. You have Cyberpunk coming up. You know, I'm looking really forward to it. So, I'm not going to keep talking your off. Why don't you guys tell me... Tell me down below. What was, like, your number one? What was your top five favorite games of the last decade? Which games did you play a lot? And, uh, if you don't mind, I would love it if you would... Hit that subscribe button over there. Hit the notification bell around the corner. Give it a thumbs up. Share the video. Like the video. And I will be with you guys next time. I hope you're having a great beginning of your week. Be good. Be blessed. And I'll see you next time.